Belize, with the help of God and the support of its people, will stand upright and will do its duty to bring peace, stability and prosperity to our region. Good day. We have a very special invited guest here to speak about one of the most important men in our nation. In celebration of George Price Day, Mr. Carvalho will walk to us his experience with Right Honorable George Price. Mr. Carvalho is a well-known Orange Kenyan, and I bet that most, if not all of you, are familiar with him. Mr. Carvalho is an active contributor in our community and country. With that said, let us welcome Mr. Belisario Carvalho. Good afternoon. My name is Belisario Ramon Carvalho. I am 83 years old. And I have lived all my life here in Orange Rock. I was born at the Trobenken. As I was growing up, my parents moved to Orange Rock Main Street. And there I started going to high school. Later on, when I got married to Miss Irma Constanza, we moved back to, to Trabenque. And um, after the death of my great-grandfather, I got the land where I have now built my home. So all my life I have been mostly in, at the, in the Trabenque area. I, I have lived all my life here, except for the couple of years that I went to Belize to attend St. John's College. And after graduation, I returned here to Orange Rock to teach. I was teaching at the Immaculada School for two years. And then I was asked to teach mathematics at Muffles College, where I spent 40 years of my life. And then, retired as a teacher from there, as a principal, after 18 years, uh, 22 years as principal and 18 years as math teacher. So now I am enjoying my retirement here in Orange York. And one of the favorite persons in my life is Mr. George Peter Price. The Honorable George Price came into my life at the very early years of the movement towards independence. Way back in 1950, I was still in primary school when I remember the, our dollar would be valued. That was our New Year's gift. In 1949, well, December 31st, 1949. And so on, on January 1st, the People's Committee was organized in Belize City to protest that move by the English that although they had given us assurances that the dollar would not be devalued, our dollar was devalued from... We, at that time, the dollar stood at one dollar Belize for one dollar US. The devaluation took it to one dollar and 40 cents Belize for one dollar US. And so, that was the beginning of what we call the peaceful, constructive revolution. And during that, those first three months, several people from Belize City came to Orange Rock to explain to the people what the movement was about. And Mr. George Price was one of those persons who used to come to Orange Rock. And my father was a very strong supporter of the movement. I recall him going to Belize City for demonstrations. And the, he had to take his own food and riding in the back of a tin truck, one of these open back trucks. And coming back late at night. Nowadays, when they have demonstrations, the first thing people ask is, will you feed us? Will you give us a bus? If you take them to early, they want breakfast, they want lunch. Those dead people made sacrifices. And that's the way I grew up. 
My father taught me to make sacrifices for the betterment of our country. And so George Price for me was a very important person. When I went to school in Belize City at St. John's, I used to follow his meetings both at the Majestic Theatre Yard or at the what they call it Mule Park, or as he called it, the University of the People. Right there across the park that's across from Brodis. And I recall attending meetings there, attending meetings there. And one of the things that struck me was that the old people used to come out there with their stools and their little chairs to sit on. For because the meeting would last for two, three hours, and they would be out there sitting down waiting. And at those meetings, a collection used to be taken to help the movement. And you see, you could see the whole ladies there dropping their five cents, their ten cents, whatever they could to support the movement. But like today, that when people you ask them to vote, they want to be paid. They have, we have become mercenaries. In those days, the people really supported the movement. Mr. Price was a person who did not speak for long hours. But he's a, he was a man who went straight to the point. One of the things that struck me about him was that he never criticized people. He always dealt with issues. As they say, the, the person, an educated person, deals with issues. The uneducated deal with personality. That's why I admired him for that. Later on, when I graduated from school and came to Orange Walk, I became a member of the executive committee in Orange Walk. And so I used to meet him very often as he would come to Orange Walk to visit. I was the master of ceremonies at almost all his meetings here in town and in the villages. And I, 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 and I went around with him and he would go to the different villages and he would eat with the people at every single village. When he reaches one village, he would tell the people, I don't want too much food because I will have to eat something with the other people in the other village. He never refused anyone. And one of his habits was to go right into the kitchen and open the pots. He said, because he said, that's the way you learn how people are really living. And he would always talk about eating local produce, the papatsul, the finished pot. He always encouraged us to eat what he produced. Me. I can recall one time when he came to Orange Walk to Muffles College that we invited him because we had invited another gentleman before who criticized Mr. Price, who accused him of selling wood to Belize to Guatemala. And so our history teacher asked me to invite Mr. Price to come and refute those allegations. And when Mr. Price came, the students were surprised that Mr. Price did not speak, did not mention this gentleman's name at any time. He dealt with the issue. I can recall one of the things that he told us was that he made visits to the San Felipe Galantuque area because his dreams was to have a road built from Arangua to San Ignacio to make it easier to go to the west instead of going through Belize. Mr. Price was a very humble man. He was a very religious man. When he used to come to Arinjoa, and I would see his jeep, I would go to Mass that morning and to meet Mr. Price, because I knew definitely he would be in church. He never went to any place where he could not go to Mass. I recall once meeting him in Miami 
I was home, I stay overnight to go to a conference, and lo and behold, I wake up in the morning to go to Mass, and there is Mr. Price returning from Mass already. I was going to about 7 o'clock Mass, he was already up by 5 o'clock to go to the first Mass. And he always made sure that wherever he stayed, it was near a church where he would, where he could walk to in the morning. This picture that I have here of Mr. Price is one of the very dear, my dear photographs. This was given to me by him in 1982 when I was deputy mayor of Orange Walk Town and he autographed this photo for me. And I have kept it over the years and it's very special to me. This photograph was taken in 1981, just before Independence Day, when Prince Michael came to Orange Walk during his tour of Belize in, in preparation for Independence Day on September 1st, 1981. This picture was taken at the People's Stadium. And in the photo, we can see Mr. Price there sitting and Prince Michael shaking hands with Dr. Bat, an East Indian doctor that served many years here in Orange Walk. Dr. Bat was a very ardent follower of the People's United Party and a very close friend to my family. In this picture, we also see the members of the Orange Walk on board that accompanied Mr. Price and the and Prince Michael. I see Miss Nettie Johnson, who was very active in the organization at that time of the celebrations of independence. And I was there as the master of ceremonies, as I did in many, many occasions. But before, in all the visits of Mr. Price, I was always the master of ceremonies at all his, at all his meetings. And so I can all, I always remember that Independence Day when we celebrated here in Orange Walk that even the Mennonites came out and donated, they donated chickens and, and um, other people donated heifers and there was a barbecue for every person who went out there to the park. There were barbecue pits all over the park and the, uh, the what is the market now? so that people could get food to eat after the Declaration of Independence. It was such a great celebration. And during the day, the Mennonites came out with their carts to take part in the parade. And I, I, I feel very proud that I was part of, those of that momentous celebration of independence.